Hello everyone. Um, this is me, Lala Rakh again on Cam Detection Pakistan. Today we have uh, orientation or introductory kind of session about this very unique program, which is for women in engineering. Um, and today for that we have alumnus of this program, Laiba. Um, Laiba is working as a management trainee in Hubco, and she is an electrical and electronic engineer from UET Peshawar. I wouldn't. Um, take her thunder away and I would let her to introduce herself more and um, about the program and uh, she will let us know more about the program. Now, but the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum everyone. It's really nice to be in this session, Lalaro. So a little about me before we begin about the Future Women in Energy Scholars program session. So I'm originally from Peshawar. I did my BSc electrical engineering from UET Peshawar. And I was in about my fifth semester around when I did when I joined the Future of Women in Energy Scholars program. And it was the first time that this program was being held. So I was part of the inaugural batch, the first time ever. And now I'm currently working as a management trainee at Habkostar Coal Power Fired uh, Coal Fired Power Plant. So this is a little bit about my Should we start with the introduction of the yes. future women? Okay. Yes. So um, this is a program that is mainly for people in their final year or their like second last year. Not third people, year or fourth only year. women. Yes, of course, women mainly. That's important. There's also a summer school for like for male students if they want to join. There's also a summer school that they've now opened, but for this future of women in energy scholars program this one's only for women and it has an extended part there is a part in doha and there's also a part in uh, in um, islamabad and in lahore so basically uh, this is targeting people women who are interested in uh, joining the energy sector of pakistan and this is mainly to develop your interest and maybe make you interested in either going for graduate school or for going for a career as well as in, in the energy sector. So the deadline is 14th March now, which is a little bit close, but anyone can still apply. So go ahead, definitely do apply. And if you miss it, then definitely go for the summer school at least. Um, let me show you what it is. So a little bit about the program. This was my cohort basically we at the u.s embassy when we were getting our certificates at the completion of the program so the u.s uh this is the future of women in energy scholars program this is a collaboration between the u.s pakistan's women council the u.s department of state and texas a&m university which is a really good university and it has its branch in u.s as well as a branch in qatar this program is mainly targeted towards female Pakistani students which are interested in energy and pursuing, who want to pursue a career in the energy sector in Pakistan. So like basically where, where the main aim is to develop the energy sector of Pakistan and foster more interest in women especially because we have very less women in the energy sector and even less on the field. So this is like really developed their interest making them question that okay is this really what i want to do if i want to do it what's what's in it so definitely look and this one line that said these you if you want to apply for the program you must be in your last or second last year in undergraduate school so one thing is that one you must be an undergrad i got a few messages from people in masters who wanted to apply unfortunately they are already in grad school we're looking we're targeting undergraduate students mainly and another thing is that if you're in a four-year program then in your third or fourth year, definitely go ahead and apply. And if you're in a five-year program, such as like I think architecture and some other programs also have five years. So you guys can also apply, but you must be then, then you would be in your fourth or fifth year. You can't apply in your third year then. And by the way, this isn't just for engineering students, which it targets the most of course, but even in our cohort, we had anything that's like related to energy and 
like you can enter from that field into the energy sector. So in our cohort, for example, we had geography students, the geophysics students, environmental sciences, uh, environmental engineers, of course. So you can even have maths, physics, chemistry. If your field somewhat relates, then go ahead and apply. It's definitely, and if your plan is, of course, to join the energy sector of Pakistan, to go for grad school, one of those things. Um, another thing is that, of course, applicants must demonstrate an interest in women's empowerment and then driving change in the energy sector. So if this is something that interests you, definitely go for this program. A few components about this program. One is that we travel all the way to Doha, Qatar, which is an amazing city. It's beautiful. It's, I think it's one of the new emerging cities of the world. And it has an amazing education city with all of these top universities from US. I think they've even recently had a Malaysian university join it. There's this whole city just for students, like this whole area. And one of those places is Texas A&M University, which targets, of course, engineering students. So there we spent two weeks uh, going to basically academic coursework. We had different presentations on different topics from renewable energy, energy transition, energy security, smart grids even. And uh, on the environmental side, there was things about water treatment and all that stuff. So this was like a very like detailed courses that you could go through. And it was very, very interested. Uh, it was very interesting to all of us. And we went from, I think, eight to four during our time. We had it every day we'd go and uh, study. And then after four, uh, you we usually just enjoyed. After that, we used to go tour Doha. So it wasn't just like, we were also seeing the cultural part of Doha as well. Like we went to the beach on Sunday for one, we had the arranged trip. We had a Doha city tour as well. It was, and we just go around on our own as well in the metro, just seeing whatever Doha had to provide, offer. So um, another thing is that there were a lot of, aside from in classroom, when we were sitting in the classroom and having lectures, we also had practical visits. So we went to Kiri, which was a research center and also the science, Qatar Science and Technology Park. So, and I think in that was during our time. And now in last year's cohort, they also went to, I think some green island as well and some other places. So like they're constantly changing up the curriculum. And aside from that, we also had round table conferences with uh, uh, women who were already established in the energy sector. So you, as someone who is interested in the energy sector, seeing women who are already working in the energy sector, that was like very inspiring. And we asked them questions because like as an entry level person in the energy sector, you you learn a lot. It, there's a lot of struggle and having someone who's already gone through that, you learn a lot from them, honestly. As a, once we came back to Pakistan, we also went to, industrial visits basically in Islamabad and in Lahore. So basically we went to different private and public companies such as CPPA, Schlumberger, NTDC, a lot of different companies. I think recently they went to Sapphire as well, some other companies. So these were like um, companies that you can use later, like things that we never even heard of some of these companies, but now we've understood it much more that, okay, this company is doing this work, CPPA is doing this work, and DDC is doing this work. You learn a lot from it. And it's, again, I'm saying that it's not just only coursework, it really develops the understanding of the energy sector. And then aside from that, they take you on trips as well on the side, whenever there's a free day, Sunday, things like that, then you go to the desert, you go for a city tour, you go for a, a lunch somewhere. It's it's very fun. Honestly, I really love the program personally. Uh, one thing that they changed, I think so, since uh, our batch, since it's only been two times. So I think that after the program completes, they also help you in getting an internship in one of the companies that you visited. And then you have to do work internship in order to get your certificate. So personally, I think that's a huge 
like that's an amazing addition to the program because that was one of the things that we wanted ourselves. So let's talk about how we, if you want to apply, how do you apply? So first of all, go to the Qatar, uh, Texas A&M at Qatar website, qatar.tamu.edu. Then you go look for the summer schools. So you follow this, you can either follow this link or you could go directly and look up, you can search on Google, uh, Tamu summer schools or something like that. You will get it directly. Then after that, there will be three, four options. For example, there's the energy and sustainability school that they started this week, uh, this year, sorry. And a part of that is the US-Pakistan Future of Women in Energy Scholars Program, which is the one that I'm talking about today. Other than that, if you're interested in artificial intelligence, go for that. You can apply for it, smart manufacturing, apply for the, any of these. I'm sure it must interest some students. So definitely apply for these programs. You can apply. I think these are only two week programs in Qatar, but of course, the difference with the US Pakistan Future of Women in Energy Scholars Program is that you come to Pakistan as well and then have industrial visits as well. I think so, at least. I cannot confirm this right now. Um, another thing is that, okay, so once you click it, then you have to click specifically the US Pakistan Future of Women in Energy Scholars Program. And then you have to click the apply button. Once you click the apply button, there will, there will be a form which you have to fill out all the required information. And you also have to apply, um, uh, upload some sort of documents such as your CV, your uh, passport, your university transcript. I think you also need the polio vaccination documentation this time. And like, oh, you also have to uh, write your personal statement as well. So these are all different things. So after this, of course, one of the biggest things that people must be wondering is that, how do I succeed? How do I become a successful applicant? And honestly, like you don't need to have much. When I was applying, I had maybe one internship at NCAI, which is the National Center for Artificial Intelligence. Aside from that, I don't really remember having much. I had a good GPA and the internship and aside from that, I didn't really have too much on my profile, like as compared to my final year where I had much more internships, much more experience courses that I could have added. So one of the things that you absolutely need to be a successful candidate is to have the passion for entering the energy sector. If you are interested in the energy sector, if you're interested in pursuing grad school, going for a master's or a PhD later on in the energy sector, contributing to the energy sector, going for field work, going for a job in it, then you should definitely reflect it in your application. And that is the biggest thing that they are going for, that they are looking for. When they are reading your application, they want to see that passion so that they can make it more that you can see that, okay, what exactly do you want to do in the energy sector? So you would be willing to learn. So show it in your statement, that is the biggest thing. Then of course, show it in your CV. What have you been doing so far? Have you been doing anything so far in terms of your, any internship at all or any project? Or of course, even the bachelor's program that you are pursuing, it shows. What, what exactly have you been doing in these past two years in your university? Uh, anything you can show. So again, there is a, you have to have a well-written statement. So I, at this time, it seems that they only have one statement. In our time, we had a separate personal statement, which was just about us. And then a separate statement about the energy sector of Pakistan and why women should be en entering the energy sector of Pakistan. So you only have 300 words maximum on this. This is very less in my opinion, but you should be able to, you must always follow the word limit. Do not go above it and try to be as close as it as possible. Like if they're giving you 300 words, then don't finish at 200 words. Try to bring it as close to as 300, 250 above as possible. Because even this, when you are writing, you will find that there's so much that you want to write, but there's only so much that you can write. So First of all, when you are writing a statement, always look 
add exactly what is written in the statement and follow it to a T. So what does it say? Provide a written statement on the importance of energy in Pakistan. This can be anything. You don't need to be completely well-versed in it. They know that you are just a student. But what is your opinion? How important is energy in Pakistan? And what is going on in your opinion? What is hindering us from being a fully energy sufficient country, for example? Why are we consistently having blackouts in our country? What's your opinion? Because there are many, many, many opinions and they are just will wanting to hear what do you think and what do you think could be a solution maybe? So what is the importance of energy in Pakistan? Look, look into that. Then the role of women in this sector. So why should we even have women in the energy sector? Why does it matter? There should be some, what your opinion that you should say that how having women in the energy sector of Pakistan, how will it bring a change to the energy sector of Pakistan? And why does it matter exactly? Then finally, the importance of women's leadership in the energy sector of Pakistan. So you need to read each and every word of these, each and every point of these exactly and address all of them because that's what they're asking you for. You should be able to answer it exactly. Now, also on the how this program will assist you in reaching your personal and professional goals. This is also a huge program. The Future of Women in Energy Scholars program, they want to see if, if they accept you into the program, what difference will it make in your life? Because if you are just there for, let's say, just a Qatar trip, then that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for someone who wants to learn who wants to network with people and who wants this program to be a stepping stone towards their future goals. So in their personal life, as well as in their professional life. So you need to think deep, what exactly are my short-term goals and my long-term goals? What job do I want to go for? What masters am I planning to go for? How will this impact me in getting that goal? How will this impact me in my personal life as well? Like uh, for there's a lot of ways that people can be impacted professionally as well as personally, because this is the first time that most girls will be going all by themselves all the way to Qatar, for example. So this is like a huge learning experience for you. Maybe some people have a few family issues while going on this program can maybe help them create a new vision for themselves, maybe break some barrier, for example. So these are things that you should be thinking of and think deep, write it down, write it down and answer to all of these, in your opinion. You can make it as long as you want initially. In the first draft, it's totally fine. But then later, bring it down, make it more concise and be as specific as possible. Don't be ge general that, okay, we need women in the energy sector of Pakistan. Why? Why do we need women? What will happen? What issues are women facing? Things like that. So make sure that you show your passion, your commitment to the energy sector, your why. Why are you even interested in the energy sector? Why are you pursuing your bachelor's degree in the first place? There must be some connect between that and your future goals. And what do you want to do in the future? Of course, another thing is that a lot of people face is that you need to have all your documents prepared. They're asking for your passport, your transcript, your polio vaccination records, your resume. So these are all things that you need to have prepared before you hit that submit button on the application. And in it, make sure that in your resume and in your personal statements, and as well as they give you maybe 100 words in other places that have you, do you have any professional experience, unpaid or paid? Do you have any... Uh, other things you would like to share, make sure to use all of that and showcase all your relevant skills, everything. It could be anything. It could be a project. It could be internships. It could be some work that you've done, some volunteer work that you've done. It could be some course or course even. Course or courses are great things, online courses or even physical courses that you've done. So showcase everything. Don't leave anything out. Experiences and achievements in your resume as well as in your personal statements. And that's it from my side. Good luck to everyone. And Lala, if you have any questions, then feel free to. Yes, if you could just um, 
stop sharing your screen, then I'll have you on the screen. Um, so my first question is about, uh, like you mentioned that we don't need much, but just, I was thinking, do we need TOEFL or yeah, sure. any English language test to apply for this program? Uh, are you asking about the TOEFL or any English test? Yeah. No, it's not required, don't worry. Okay. No, it's um, not required at all. Is there any minimum eligibility, like GPA required to be able to apply for the program? As as far as I know, there is no minimum GPA, but please do check on the website for this. But preferably you should have above, in my, in my opinion, I feel like you should have above three GPA at least. If you have on the lower side, at least compensate it with a stronger personal statement or mm -hmm. some internships to back it up or something like that. But so far, I don't know anything about a minimum GP. Okay. Uh, and like, how would you say that this program changed your um, career or your journey? I mean, I could sense from your mm -hmm. like presentation because like, um, so there's something I could relate to. So I was a global U grad alum, like U grad student. Um, if you know about the program, do you know about this? So this is a one semester exchange uh, program that students go to USA. And of course, like all the things that you mentioned, first time international travel, being alone, um, breaking the stereotypes and being able to just travel alone and all that. And that was us um and like the learning experience in addition to that and especially 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 coming for women in pakistan and um so i could relate to it i think we just um lost liber but i'll continue with this um so this program jo hai specifically women ke liye hai, girls ke liye hai, and i'm i'm just um so jealous ki hamare time pe nahi tha uh, if that had been at our times i mean i would have done Hello? anything to apply for it hi laiba uh, when you were dropped out i was just talking about my u grad experience and was just trying to relate it and i was just mentioning that how much i am jealous that uh, i wish that it had been available at our times but this is so such a specific summer program and only specific to the audience. So I assume that the all the content would be Pakistan specific as well, like all the limitations that our energy sector has and all that. Um, so just can you reflect more on your journey, like how it has impacted on your professional career? Okay, so when I was uh, basically applying for the program at that time, I barely knew about any programs <laughs> so i relate a lot to the audience i didn't even know about you grad honestly so okay that is uh, honestly mm -hmm. so when i saw it it was like okay i was already interested in the energy sector of pakistan but in pursuing an, a career in it at least but i wasn't fully sure that what exactly do i want to do i was very confused about that honestly i just knew that i was interested in ai I was interested in energy. What am I going to do now? So going on this specific, when I saw this program, honestly, I was like, this is perfect for me. I applied, alhamdulillah, I got in. And once once I got to, so they cover everything. Like, yeah. A lot of very interesting topics from, like I said, from renewable energy to the energy transition. These are things that I learned for the first time. What is an energy transition? What is energy security of Pakistan, for example? And uh, smart grids are very, I'm very interested yeah. in them personally. And uh, I have two so questions. Also on the, yeah. Sorry, I'm cutting you, but because the yeah, question was relevant. Um, do you think this program had any role uh, in getting you the like the job that you're currently doing uh i think so that it did because like when you have this program or some sort of international experience on your resume it show it stands out compared to other applicants and then second of all it also shows that you were specifically interested in the energy sector of Pakistan, it's specifically interested in working in this area, and you have some 
uh, you've studied about it specifically. So I think that definitely it does stand out and it does provide that stepping stone that you need. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just curious, how is your language so proficient? I mean, you're like, um, have you, like, does the program help you with it? Or like, it's like, did you continue working for something else? Uh, what do you mean by language? I was just appreciating your language. That okay, it's so thank perfect. you. Actually, I... And it's at a, yeah. I'm sorry, and it's a, at a perfect uh, pace because normally when we do sessions in English, I'm just really um, curious because a lot of feedback that we get is like because the targeted audience is what they want it in Urdu. Uh, but the pace was perfect and mm. I really appreciate your language. So I was just concerned, has this any connection with the program? Uh, no, this program doesn't have any connection. Okay. Uh, actually, I grew up abroad for a few years, so that was, okay. I spent so a little that, bit of my childhood abroad. That's it. That Almost explains the, it. Yeah. Okay. Um, exactly. Okay. Like, okay. Um, so I think the audience would also be interested in knowing that, like, did you had to pay anything for it? I'm sure this would be the like nothing, most, nothing. nothing. At all. Don't worry anything about that. There's nothing that you have to pay. Uh, they deal with your visa process. They deal with your travel. They buy your uh, ticket and everything. They deal with travel within Qatar, and they even provide you a stipend in the Qatar part as wow. well as when you come back to Pakistan to buy your food or whatever extra you have in a good stipend. So don't okay. worry anything about the travel cost. It shouldn't stop anyone. So imagine that I submitted my application and the deadline for this mm. year is 14th of March. Um, so what happens next? Is there an interview round or what? Or I just get selected? Like not me, of course. Uh, but <laughs> during my time, <laughs> during my time, there was no interview at all. You just submitted okay. your application and then after a while they shared an email that you were selected and I'm pretty wow. sure it's the same this year as well because they haven't shared anything that interviews or any timeline when I was looking at the website so it's the same in my opinion I believe so you mean that like you apply and then you get selected and right away you apply for the mm -hmm. visa there's nothing yes. in between exactly that's, that's amazing um it's it's different from your grad where you have to go for an interview yeah as well. I was no I but I'm just wondering um and that really that comes to my that brings my next question just like i think they're not being the interview round how much do you think that people but not again people women and women. girls uh from sindh specifically i'm sorry <laughs> to be uh reason specific but like because of course these are i don't know i should not be saying minority here but how much chances to the women from Sindh and KPK and Balochistan have, because as we know, the ratio of women in these kind of related fields, because like, you know, you mentioned very clearly that anything that could be related to energy, but like it would take a while for people or women to understand that what's related to energy. And like, mm -hmm. it could be related into so many ways, but like for now, maybe we are just talking about girls who are coming from energy, sorry, electrical or electronics background or something very related to it so what are the chances um that if such a person such a woman such a girl applies and they get selected i think that they have really great chances personally because mm -hmm. most of the applicants <laughs> are from islamabad lahore in my uh, batch i was the only one from peshawar oh, there was one other person from uet peshawar she was from abdabad and then only one from karachi and one from hyderabad and one of the things that we raised in the program we were like we want more people from like like you said, someone minority regions. We want more people from KPK, That's more people so from interior. Like how many? Exactly. How many of you were in total? We were only seventeen, so it was less in the start, but still. And I'm I feel sure like they it, have so much yeah. more funds than like than accommodating more than yes. seventeen people. Yes. Actually, in the start, first for we were the first batch, so I feel like very less people knew. Like even yeah. I barely found out. Like I found out very late on the, and i was like okay i need to apply for this and we're so, talking about 2022 like right knew. yes 2022 so and i like, think in this last year COVID. they had more people 
from these places. I think there was someone from Balochistan. I'm not sure. But we didn't have any Balochis in our batch even. So oh I was like, God. we need we need a little bit of more equal from all the provinces at God, least. Right? This video reaches to all that women that we are intending. Exactly. That's this what I hope reaches myself. This year. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, yeah, so just that that speaks because like when you said there's no interview and that's mm. that's this... why I was wondering that if a uh, people from women from Meran UET because like I belong there so I yes. own that uh, place both of the campuses so Jamshoro campus is like even more because if this video reaches there I'm sure there are going to be tons of applications um, but I hope that this video reaches to Kharpur which is uh, Sakhar region there I like to say so Sakhar IB and I don't know because like just 17 and like some more women um so they're just so bright chances if you just have to put up application um before closing this i have already put on my social media that i am open uh, for giving any help in making a good application like in this case just making an application mm -hmm. um but uh and like anybody who is watching this please reach out to me and i'll uh share the email address where you can reach out to me i'm sorry Laba, but like and then there are just three more days. Uh, would you be also open to help people if they reach out to you? Of course, I shared it my, on my LinkedIn as well. So please do feel free to connect with me and feel free to message me asking. I'm willing to review personal statements mm -hmm. or give any suggestions about the CV. I've already done it for a few people so far. That's and great. honestly, really, I, re yeah, I really hope that more people from lesser known regions will will be able to join and i feel like it inspires people a lot more because yeah. like i know myself that how the dynamics are family dynamics for example exactly. that how sometimes people aren't so willing to have, go for it so i hope that it inspires yeah. people and feel free to ask anything any questions any help i'm i'm here all right, all right. Thank you so much. Um, so whoever wants to reach out to Laiba, they can reach out to her through LinkedIn. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you so much, Laiba. Um, like if you have any closing statement, uh, more than welcome, just to maybe boost their motivation even more. <laughs> or we can close. Well, my biggest thing is that if you are thinking about applying, just apply. Don't think that, okay, <laughs> I have this uh, deficiency in my application or I don't think I'm good enough. I felt I wasn't good enough when I was applying. Go ahead. Do it. Just do it, honestly. You know, when I... And I'm sure you could do it. I can't stop relating my UGRID experience um, just like before, just on last note. So when I got the final, final, final call for UGRID, after all the interviews and everything um so when i got the call and i told my father that um, i'm selected and like uh, and i'm the principal candidate not mm -hmm. even the alternate which means you're for sure Myself. going yes um so my father was like it's in his game and you're kidding that's that couldn't be possible because you know it was 2015 yeah. like mm -hmm. 2014 i'm talking about and like me going alone so that doesn't mm -hmm. even seem real and I'm sure it's been like yes. 10 years but things have not really changed They things have changed yes. a bit but not a lot and the regions that we are trying to reach um, but like we are there we can talk to your parents and like uh, help them and exactly. Qatar is like closer than USA um, it's there it's so a Muslim, Muslim country, country too, it's so a Muslim it's country it's easy. Not, like, speaking of safety like people used to ask yes. me US safe and come on I'm it's safer very than safe. Pakistan so <laughs> We're talking about Qatar. It's it's just mm -hmm. right there. And like, um, sorry, it's two weeks per uh, long. Uh, two weeks in Qatar, and okay. then two weeks in Islamabad and Lahore. Cool. All right. Yes. I think we have covered pretty much whatever we could. Uh, you could put your questions, comments, uh, anything in the YouTube comment section and reach out to us. Uh, I'll leave my email address. And you can reach out to Laiba on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Laiba, for doing yeah, of this. Course. Thank really, you. Really, really, thank you so it much. Because, great. like, you know, if I would have yes. done it for myself, the, the, the shining that I have from your eyes, from your words, and from the actual <laughs> experience, I couldn't have done that alone. Um, so thank you so much for doing this.
Thank you so much. And one thing I would like to add is in like your US experience, it was the same for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't like I said this a billion times during my when I was in the program, I was like, I actually got into Nast and GIK, these wow. places when I was in okay. undergrad, but my father didn't let me go because of the oh hostel issue. Yeah, so oh I God. ended up staying That's in my true. city fish shower. So it's something I wanted to share is that like when I was applying for this program, it's like Qatar, will he really leave, let me go? Are you crazy? <laughs> but still, I was like, let me apply and then we'll talk later. And eventually, yeah. thank God, I was able to convince him to let me go. So I'm like, yeah. If I can and go, then you can definitely You know, Laiba, I mean, <laughs> just because I'm relating so much. Um, So, like, this was maybe, was well, you have lived abroad, but this was your first maybe international mm-hmm. learning experience. And, and 2022 has been just now, but I'm sure, for example, like me, if you'll be telling your story 10 years later, and I hope to be in touch, your story would, like, have so much, but this program would have so much to add on to your entire journey when you're yes. telling your story so for example when I tell my uh, story there are so many other components apart from Ugrid but then Ugrid is like it's an awe you can't for me of course uh, you can't have I, sometimes I'm out of words when I'm and I'm want to explain about like I'm out of words now so that would be the same for you and all yes. the women that are going to apply yes. for this program um i hope it changes your life your perspective on everything it helps you realize what exactly you want to do somewhat and you can ask the teachers they're so nice the people there the women that you meet there you can ask them honestly anything they are willing to help you and you will have this program and you know what i was yeah i was following this program uh, and i wanted like i did a post but that didn't really work out and like i just randomly saw your post on linkedin and I can't imagine, like, I can't define how much, like, you know, a proud, like, like a mother. I mean, because, like, of course, I'm much <laughs> senior than you. And I was, I was so happy to see you specifically because, like, where you belong from. Uh, because, like, that's my targeted audience. Sorry for being biased. Because, like, you know, like, my non-targeted it's audience. my audience, too, it. honestly. <laughs> yeah, they have the resources. So thank you so much, Laiba, for relating, understanding, and doing this. Um, Thank you so much. It was great talking to you as well. I hope it reaches that audience, and I hope that they get inspired in some way. Just apply. Just apply. That's all I'm saying. Forget about everything else. Thank you.